during the development of Hubble, we scientists would go to meetings down uh, at Marshall Space Flight Center where Hubble was being developed, and one of the things we worried about was the telescope would change temperatures and would cause a jolt and make the pictures messy. That, of course, was a red herring, as it turned out. And then we got to the launch date in, in April of 1990, and, uh, and I'm, I'm positive that if we all had written down the 100 most likely problems with the Hubble Space Telescope, if everybody involved with Hubble had written down those top 100, not one of them, not one of them would have listed the mirrors the wrong shape. That, uh, led, to the, uh, that led to three years of absolute hell for all of us because Hubble became, uh, it was in, in the press all the time with the problems. It was a billion dollar mistake. Uh, late night comedy hosts were making jokes about Hubble. Cartoons would appear with Mr. Magoo as the true inventor of the Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, in the meantime, the Hubble team, we worked quietly for three years. We promised back in 1990 that we had a way to fix it. Uh, and uh, we put a new camera in with corrective optics in it that would cure the optical problem. Nobody believed us, but we promised that we'd do it and would do it by December 93. And uh, we launched the uh, the mission, SM-1, on December 2nd. I'll never forget that day, uh, 1993. And after five EVAs, uh, spacewalks, uh, the astronauts came home. And about two weeks later, we took off the bandages from our eyes, and suddenly Hubble was fixed. We knew Hubble was going to be important even before it was launched because it represented a factor of 10, 10 times more power uh, to astronomical capability in terms of uh, resolution, how sharp the image is, in terms of how faint you could see, uh, than any current ground-based telescopes back in 1990. Ten times doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a huge number in astronomy. The last time we went a factor of ten in capability to see the sky was all the way back in the 1600s when we went from the eye to Galileo's telescope. Nobody could have predicted it becoming an icon, a world icon, in terms of science, in terms of education. You, you, you can't pick up an astronomy textbook any place on Earth, I maintain, if it's been published in the last 10 years. And it doesn't matter if it's published in Arabic, English, Spanish, uh, Lithuanian, or whatever. Uh, I guarantee you that book will be filled with Hubble images. Hubble's been adopted by the American people. When the final servicing mission was canceled a few years ago, uh, kindergarten kids, grade school kids were writing in postcards saying, please save the Hubble, save our telescope. Uh, it's just become part of American society. If the average American knows or has heard of one scientific project or instrument in their entire lives, if it's only one, I'll bet you that would be the Hubble. Today, everybody thinks Hubble is the greatest thing since sliced bread. It was a great investment of American tax dollars. It inspires kids. Hopefully, some kids will become scientists and engineers because of Hubble excitement, etc. But what most people forget, Hubble went through the same kind of birthing pains that today's projects are going through. When I got involved with Hubble, it was going to launch in 1983 for a cost of $400 million. It wound up being launched in 1990 for a cost of about $1.6 billion. If you do the math uh, from the time of about 1980 to about uh, 2015 or so when the Hubble will maybe end, uh, you do the math, Hubble's, Hubble will have cost the American taxpayers about $10 billion over that 30 or 35 years. Uh, that comes out to be about two cents a week for every American over those 35 years. And when you put it that way, people say, yeah, it's probably worth two cents a week, dollar a year. This mission has quite a quite a history. Uh, it was originally planned to uh, launch uh, about uh, 2004 or 5 or so, uh, but then the Columbia accident occurred and the administrator at the time decided that this would not be uh, a safe thing to do because what most people don't realize is every time the shuttle launches it goes someplace now, it goes to the space station. It's a different inclination of orbit. Uh, to go to Hubble, you go to a different orbit. Uh, and if something goes badly on this mission, you cannot get to the space station. There's no uh, safe haven, so to speak. Uh, and the shuttle can only stay in space for a few weeks. So we had a deuce discussion. The shuttle people, to their credit, found a way to make this a safer mission. And that is, the way you do that is have a second space shuttle on the launch pad 
ready to go and rescue the astronauts if it's determined that there was a problem with the first orbit or some debris hit or something that would uh, risk the, uh, their lives coming back in, into the atmosphere. So that's why you'll see two shuttles on the launch pad. I don't think that's ever occurred before uh, for a launch. Uh, hopefully we will never have to launch a second one. Uh, hopefully the mission will go just fine. And, uh, but we're there. We're, we're capable of rescuing the astronauts if we have to. I've seen all of the uh, Hubble, Hubble launches. I've seen a lot of shuttle launches, but the Hubble launches, of course, are uh, special. Uh, knowing that this is the last one, knowing that I've spent an entire lifetime on this, uh, it will be a lot of nostalgia, but I, I won't feel any pain because uh, there are many things that people can work on in their careers. Uh, I could have gone into uh, you know uh, other fields. I could have been an engineer, and maybe maybe my contribution to society is I could have designed the first cell cell phone that broke the three ounce barrier, you know, and only weighed two point nine five ounces. In a hundred years from now. Maybe my grandchildren would consider that a major breakthrough. I have a feeling 100 years from now, Hubble's still going to be in the history books. And knowing their granddad uh, worked on Hubble and was heavily involved in it, I think, uh, leaves a legacy that I'm, I'm kind of proud, proud of.